Well, good evening. Uh, the time is currently uh, coming up to quarter past, or quarter to 11 in the evening. This is Thursday, the 14th of July. And um, I, I don't know why, but I'm in the mood for doing a little bit of streaming. Um, so here we are. Welcome, welcome to the stream. Uh, I've got some music in the background. I hope it's not too loud and uh, um, etc. But yeah. Um, okay, let's get started. So we're going to play some SimSig today. Um, so SimSig is a simulation software which shows basically what a signaler would see in the signaling center and it covers several different aspects and areas in the UK and across the world as well. I think there's a simulation in Hong Kong and Chicago. So just as a evening stream today we're going to head on over to the SimSig and yeah just enjoy. Uh, I'll, I'll try my best to explain some of the aspects as well but the aim of this tonight is I'd say probably for about half an hour I would say let's go through SimSig and explain how it is and just have a relaxing stream so it'll be absolutely fantastic to uh, have any feedback on the stream please make sure the sound is working etc um, and the uh, music you can hear the music as well that'd be greatly appreciated uh, if it's too loud uh, let me know but uh, I'll be two seconds now and we'll get straight into it so enjoy the music then hello and welcome back so I'm back I've just got my phone uh, which is here now just in case I need to uh, edit any volumes or anything like that so I can decrease the volume of the music a little bit if I want to such so you can hear me so let's get straight into this so this here is uh, SimSig and this is your loading screen and like I said before this is a simulation for um, working uh, signaling areas in in UK. So, but first of all, let's go back um, to the chat. So, Will says hello. So, hello to you too. JR Trains, hello to you. ONR10, hello to you too. Mr. Crompton, 33012, uh, hello. I've never really understood SimSig, so you'll be a good teacher. LOL. So, I'll, I'll do my best. And uh, OW's Level Crossings and more says hi. So, hello to you. Uh, and without further ado, because I've faffed around for about five minutes now, let's get straight into the area. Okay, so currently it's looking for simulations on my computer. It will be a little bit more slow than normal because my computer is a potato. Um, but as you can see, hopefully, uh, you can see the uh, red, yellow lights and green lights next to the simulation. So these are all the simulations you could possibly download for the SimSig software. The yellow ones 
um, need a license. So you need a license, you need to purchase a license for a small fee and then you'll be able to play that area. You can also play it for a limited amount of time but it'll be best if we go for the license. The ones with the green signals here and you can filter them using this tick, tick, uh, text tick box here. Um, these do not require a license and you can see we've been worldwide about Chicago or Hong Kong East. Um, let's start off with a simpler one. Where should we go off with? Um, I say Westbury. Westbury power signaling box and Reading panel 4. Fantastic. That will do. Okay. Uh, the timetable is... <laughs> the latest timetable is, is 2007. That's okay. Uh, and then we'll do... Will we standard? Or should we do Westbury avoiding line? Let's do standard just for the moment. And then start simulation paused. Right then. I'm going to switch to my art quickly because the next page does reveal some personal information if you want to set up a online um, section um, it will reveal your IP address and things like that uh, and etc which I do not want on the internet that would be fantastic not to have however we should be all now up and running so if we head on over to the desktop transition over to there and that looks to be all working. Fantastic. So here we are in Westbury. So this is SimSig. So you can see your main um, area here. So we can got Westbury Station in the middle. If we go towards the left here, we've got uh, Trowbridge, Bradford on Avon, etc. going down towards Salisbury and Southampton. We've also got the uh, line going through to Pusey, Bedwin, Hungerford, etc. Going towards Reading down here. There's Newbury, a Newbury race course. And then over on the right hand side, we'll see... Uh, hang on, I've got this the wrong way around. So this will be the line Trowbridge, Bradford on Avon. That's the line up to Bath, I apologise. This is the line down to Southampton, Dilton Marsh, Warminster. If we head on over this way, we've got through, got um, Mendip quarries over here, so Waitley and Meerhead quarries over here, and we've got lines heading down towards Castle Kerry and on towards Bath or Yeovil. So, as you may see in a corner, we have the this is our time, so this is the time we're working to, uh, and already. We've already got a signal lamp failure detected in the Bradford Junction relay interlocking area, which is uh, near Bradford on Avon. There's Bradford Junction there. So we've got a uh, signal lamp failure and it, it, it produces all sorts of failure conditions, track circuit failures, level crossing failures, as you can see, signal failures, etc. So it is quite realistic. Now you may have noticed that we've uh, gone forward 47 seconds in about set a uh, one second. That's because if you press F3 on your keyboard, you can see I've got the fastest speed. But let's go down to the normal because you've got a telephone call from yard control. So this is uh, three minutes past midnight, and we've got two Charlie 90 ready to, ready at the entry point to Westbury New Sidings. Um, so that will appear somewhere over here. So where's Westbury? There we are. So two Charlie nine zero. Now, um, what I do here is press the TD interpose button at the top and type that in. Two Charlie nine zero. Uh, and because there aren't any trains about, I can just sort of put that there. And you can click on it and see where the train is going. For example, this train is going from Freshford to Avoncliffe to Bath Spa. So it's it's here at Westbury. So it will need to go through Fair Road Junction and Clink Road Junction to Froome. So, and then, most importantly, this line at the bottom will tell you what this train will turn into. It will turn into a 5 Alpha O2. 
okay which departs at 19 minutes past midnight so we are wanting to um there you go you can see the train has just entered westbury new sidings have we got the sign there no that's why i've put it down here so you can see the timetable So we need to route it. It's going to miss Westbury Station, which is annoying. Um, we'll need to route it towards Fairwood Junction, which is over here, and down to Froome. So we've got a telephone call already, Shunter. 7 Charlie 43 is ready at Newbury Yard. Okay, that's, let's give that a go. New sidings, we want that to go down to here. The way I did that is I clicked on the entry signal clicked on the exit signal and you can see the path has been set for the train to proceed okay so you can see the line has now turned red and that is the train now proceeding through the section and we want to set a route down to Froome so you can just continue to click on each signal here and here and you can see, I don't know if you can see on the stream, but this signal here has a little grey bar underneath it. And that means it is an automatic signal. You can't set a route from these signals. If you click on them, nothing will happen. So you don't need to worry about those signals. The ones you do need to worry about are the ones without that grey bar. So hence, we want to go down to Froome. So we will click on the entry signal click on the exit signal and then head down to through and that train is sorted we'll keep the description here just so we know what the uh, train is going to be doing in fact we can interpose this we can see that this the system doesn't know what train this is so if we right click and interpose and we can type in to Charlie 90 that train is now shown as to Charlie 90. We can get rid of this one. Now you may have seen at the top here, this is our messages window, uh, that 7 Charlie 43 has entered Newbury Yard, which is over here. Um, now we can pause time as such by clicking on the clock. And we'll just go to the live chat to see if there's any questions. Uh, OW's level crossings in more has brought a yodel alarm fantastic Eden fourth says hello hope you're doing well um, so new yard 7 Charlie 43 so we just interpose that 7 Charlie 43 because we can't see it already on here we'll just plonk it here uh, 45 oops I've mistakenly typed that wrong as 45 it should be 43 nice one so we click on that goes to the Bedouin Woodborough Lavington etc to Westbury uh, through Newbury platform 2 okay hello to Hornby and trains hope you're doing well so we can see that the train is meant to go through Newbury platform 2 so we shall route it as such from the new yard up to there and then that will take care of itself really we can cancel that as it's going to pop out over here hello to mi m17 mi7 film so hope you're doing well now we want to check our train over here at Froom. you can see it's chugging along nicely as you can see it's just moved so uh, in a short while we will need to uh, pay attention to that as it gets near through. As we saw it will turn into 5 Alpha 02 at through which departs in about 10 minutes time. Okay so what we could do here is because nothing much is happening we can speed up time a bit so I'm going to go about 4 times speed. You can see the red line appearing here from Newbury Yard this will be the 7 Charlie 43 train and as soon as the uh, description train ID box pops up we can interpose that and give it its correct name because 
the uh, train doesn't know the system doesn't know what train it is so there it is so now we can interpose this 7 Charlie 43 7 Charlie 43 nice one and then we can get the timetable as such so it goes through Bedwin, Woodborough, Lavington, Platform oh no these are the engineering allowances etc uh, down relief etc uh, etc et so we can set that route now um, where are we so you see the, the train's about to run out of line, right? No, because you've got the A here, and this relates uh, to another section of the map. So this A here relates to this A over here, okay? So the train will travel from this location up to here, just to shorten the screen width. And uh, as far as I can see, I, I do believe these um level crossings Kintbury and Hungerford are controlled from a different signal box so they'll be done automatically all of these are automatic signals because they've got the gray bar underneath so we don't have to actually worry about that train until it gets to about Pews Pewsy nice one that's good let's check over on our train over here at Froome so you can see it's arrived at Froome and we can see it's going to change into 5 alpha 02 so we'll change interpose that to 5 alpha 02 ta -da. nice one so this will go from oh hang on we have a telephone call so just to slow everything down and yard control so 7 charlie 39 is ready at westbury new sightings that can pop in okay good this train departs at uh, 19 minutes past, so this will go via Clink Road Junction, Fair Road Junction, uh, whoopsie. So basically you back the way it came, okay, that's fine. That departs in exactly one minute. So you can see the white line is still set here and we want it to go the other direction and it won't allow us to because this route is already set so to do that you can right click and cancel the route and right click and cancel the route and this will allow us therefore to set the route back the way this train had come by clicking on the entry signal and then on the exit signal and the route will be set for us and therefore that train will now take care of itself we can see that this train should go through Wet Westbury Platform 1, reverse at Westbury North Junction, and then go to the Westbury Engine Sidings, uh, hopefully arriving shortly. <laughs> yes, here we are. So that train should be departing quite soon. So as you can see, the route hasn't been reset from when the train originally went to Froome. So we can do right click, cancel route, right click, cancel route, right click, cancel route. Even though they didn't really affect us, we can do that anyway. 7 Charlie 39 has entered Westbury new sidings. Okay, so we can do the same what we did, like what we did earlier. So 7 Charlie 39. And we can plonk it here. And we can see that this wants to go Fairwood Junction, Clink Road Junction, Blatchbridge to Mirhead Quarry. Okay. So we can allow this to go this way. Now, where did it go? It went through Fairwood, Clink Road, Blatchbridge. Okay. So there's Fairwood, there's Clink Road. There's Blackbridge, so the train will want to come along in this direction as such. Here. Okay, we can see we've got a telephone call up here. 7 Charlie 23 at Woodborough Siding. Whereabouts is that then? I've got absolutely no idea where Woodborough Siding is. Anybody know where Woodborough Siding is? Ah, Woodborough Siding here. Seven Charlie thirty 
Okay, let's interpose this. 7 Charlie 39. And we can plonk it here. Fairwood Junction, Clink Road Junction. Oh, hang on. Put the number. The and we want to route that through Westbury Platform 1. But we can't at the moment because this train is in the way. So this train will have to wait for this train to clear this section. If you follow the lines along, we we'll want this the 5 Alpha 02 to come along and head up this way to get into platform 1 over here. But of course, a 7 Charlie 39, which we can um, stick on the head code now and cancel that. This train, of course, is in the way. So we have to wait for this train to vacate the area before we can proceed up into platform 1 with this train. And this is also a good example of how to um, describe UK signalling systems. So you can see you've got a red signal here because it's stop. And then before the red signal, we've got the yellow signal or uh, amber. And this is, called, this is called caution. And this warns the driver that the next signal here is going to be red, which it is. Some areas uh, there are two yellow signals put together one on top of the other it's just disappeared here good timing but that means the next signal is going to display a yellow aspect so the sequence is red and the next step up will be yellow and the next step up will be double yellow and the next step up will be green but this signal here isn't green because the next signal here is red nice one so we can now route this train down here and we'll need to cancel this route and cancel this route uh, and we've got a ah, driver of 2 Charlie 23 reporting points are set wrong okay that's not very useful wait two minutes 7 Charlie 23 7 Charlie 23. Okay, then where's that? Is that the one that's departed from Woodborough? No, nope, that's 7 Charlie 43. I think that was what I saw earlier uh, in the telephone call. So 7 Charlie 23. Let's interplonk that up into here, Woodborough siding. Uh, points set against train. Woodborough, Woodborough East. And then that will want to go towards Westbury. This is quite complicated, as you can see. And this is going to be quite interesting because we'll need to release the ground frame. Wood for siding, I'm guessing, is here. And the train will want to come up from the siding, stop here, reverse using this shunt signal and then hence continue along this direction towards New uh, Westbury. So to do that we shall return to normal time which we have and we'll need to release the ground frame which we have here and to go to the ground frame we'll need to show leave the frames and then we'll want Woodborough Okay, and then we'll need to change the lever here. And I'm guessing I've got absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Aha. Well, I've given the, the all clear to the train. And we want this to go here. Ah, we want to cancel that route. And we want to do that. Nope, we want to do that. Okay. I've got absolutely no idea what I'm doing relating to this ground frame, but I think I've done that correctly. Uh, in other news, we have our train over here, 5 Alpha 02. 
we can now route that to platform 1 as 7 Charlie 39 has disappeared up the line. So we can do this by going up here and up to here. Nice one. Now that's, this is meant to sit at platform 1 for about 10 minutes. So we'll let that do what it's meant to do. Let this train do what it's meant to do. And yeah, continue on as normal. I do hope this train will pop out of the siding anytime soon. Hmm. So this, this lever number one will be the master lever, the king lever. And this will um, enable, basically, the entire rest of the train. Driver at 7 Charlie 23 was porting an adverse change of aspect to R467. Please continue. Now we can right click uh, here. That is because I reverted this here. R500. Hang on. Hmm. Yes, so that is because this signal here I changed uh, to clear and then changed it back to stop and then changed it back to clear again, uh, which isn't a good thing to do. So that's why I had that telephone call there. 5 Alpha 02 for some reason still hasn't gone past. Uh, oh no, nope, yep, it's gone past, okay. Hmm. It didn't show that signal being at a proceed aspect, but it's gone past anyway. We've got our fantastic Far 7 Charlie 43 chugging along here. Now, what else do we have? We've got three freight trains, I believe. Moving on the telephone, moving and moving. Okay, that's absolutely fine. So, let's deal with this train now. So, this train is meant to go through Clink Road Junction here, Blatchbridge here, East Somerset Junction here, and then Mearhead Quarry Junction. Uh, over here somewhere. There, Quarry Junction. So we need to route this train accordingly. So click on the entry signal. And if the entry signal has a blue A next to it, if you click on that, this signal becomes automatic. So you don't have to keep setting the route from it anymore. Okay, so click on the entry signal, click on the exit. Now we need to head, uh, route this train down into the Mearhead Quarry line. So we can click on the entry signal, click on the exit signal here. There we are. And as such, through here. Nice one. So that is sorted. If we bugger off over here now we can see that here 7 Charlie 23 has arrived into pose 7 Charlie 23 here we can cancel this now cancel quarry control 7 Alpha 71 is ready at the entry point Waitley quarry Scheduled 0028. Okay, that can enter. So that is entered now. We'll return this this direction. That will remove the authority from this signal. And we can press this number 2 here. Which will give us the uh, ability to set the signal. Set the route from this signal here. Which will do... Uh, in fact, we need to cancel the route here and then do that. Perfect. 
hopefully that is well clear of this train which it is and what we can do now is remove the cling lever hang on nope uh, we need to wait for this to depart first so we'll give that a moment uh, we have noticed that a train has departed wait the quarry which is over here so we'll try and put it over there perfect seven alpha what, seven one has entered Waitley quarry which is exactly what we are rooting from good where is this train this train departs in four minutes Westbury North Junction reverse to Westbury engine sidings. Where are the engine sidings? So the engine sidings are down here. Westbury North Junction is here. So what we can do is plonk this train down here and then it will be able to use this signal to reverse into the engine sidings as such. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that works. I don't know why the train describer hasn't migrated across to here. But that's absolutely fine. We cancel the route from this signal and from this signal. So we have the ability to route trains as needed. We have a train waiting at a red signal over here. I don't know why. Okay. Uh, but we've also got a train that has entered Southcote Junction. So where is that? It's down Westbury. Hmm. Ah, over here, 2 kilo 98, and this will be terminating at Newbury, platform 2. So we can, uh, no, I clicked on a automatic signal, because remember these signals with a grey bar underneath are automatic. So all we need to do here is cancel the route from here, and from here, and this train, as we saw, will be arriving at Newbury platform 2, hence... This is all automatically controlled. So the only thing we need to do is route this train into platform two over here. And that's pretty much done with this train. Now, what we can do is cancel the route from this train. We're looking after seven Charlie 23 here. And now we've done that, we can remove the authority of the route, remove the king lever, remove the anarchy. key, And then remove, um, replace the ground frame as it was. And there we are, that train is on its way. We can see that 7 Alpha 7 1 has now departed Waitley Quarry. So we do 7 Alpha 7 1 as such. Nice one. I think it's all going well so far uh, let's look at the train list so this is stopped at Westbury should be departing in a minute uh, moving 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 that's what we like to see waiting for the right of way okay so the train is ready to leave uh, it's just waiting for the station staff to um, allow it to go basically and now we can see it is departed. Look at that, perfect. Right then, I'll just switch to my channel art quickly because I want to check something uh, and I'll be with you very shortly. Well then, we should be back to the desktop. Fantastic. 5 alpha 02. So we need to interpose this to 5 alpha 02. Hence, we can can cancel this route here. And this train now goes to the west with engine sidings. So, 
we go to the Westbury engine sidings, but we want to check first whether we need to place a call to the engine sidings to request access to them. And engine sidings in. There we are. Dial. It's currently is ringing and connected. So we will request permission. 5 Alpha 02. Good. Engine sidings in. Hang up and close. Perfect. So now we can route this train to the engine sidings in. Nice one. Good. This train's a bit late actually. It's parted Thiel. Eight minutes late. Two kilo ninety eight. Eight minutes late. That's absolutely fine. We've got no worries about that. This is going well so far, I believe. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, we did notice that there was a uh, signal lamp failure detected in the Bradford Junction relay, but no trains have actually gone in that direction yet. So that isn't affecting us. We can see that the 7 Charlie 39 is now approaching Mirhead Quarry Junction. No, East Somerset Junction, sorry. And the Mirhead Quarry Junction is over here. 7 Alpha 71 is on its way from Hapsford and Waitley Quarry. Uh, and 5 Alpha 02 should uh, depart. Oh, okay. Departs at 48 minutes past. Okay, that's going to be a wait. Hopefully, nothing needs to use Platform 3. Um. Hmm. I may have slightly messed up here because this train is now approaching Westbury shortly which will be there 0103 okay that's plenty of time actually and that goes through platform 3 but the problem is platform 3 is currently occupied so I want to put a train through this platform 3 well I can't because this train is currently in the way which isn't very useful. Um, so this is why sometimes it's important not to set routes for trains right away. And that's one of my mistakes I keep on doing. Um, so now if this train manages to get to over here early, it will have to sit and wait. But the first of all, first thing you need to do is look after this train over, over here. This will need to go through Froome North Junction, which is over here. I'm going to cancel this route here. Cancel. And we can set the route from this signal to this signal. Click on the entry. Click on the exit. And now this will clear the signal here to green. Which is good. Green signals on the all the way is a good idea. We can see this train is heading towards Mirhead. And uh, my SimSig has decided to not respond, which is absolutely fantastic. Fan dabby dozy. Um, hmm. Well, unfortunately, my computer has said no. Um, yes, it's it's not a very happy computer. Hmm. If this doesn't sort itself out shortly then we'll have to end this simulation we'll just transfer to the picture of a pacer quickly just let the computer sort itself out give it a moment or two to relax maybe the computer's tired as well I'm not sure 
but we are having a couple of technical difficulties. So this picture here was taken at Cardiff Central, as you can see by the station sign over here. Um, and this is quite a nice picture. It's got a nice gloomy feel to it. It was foggy and drizzly and slightly murky, which is quite interesting. We've got a pacer heading off to Barry Island here. Um, and we've got the signal cleared off for the B for Barry Island, I believe. This is platform 8 we're standing on here. Green signal. And in the middle of the picture, you may notice another signal here, which is red but has the uh, theatre box indicator D above it and um, this is uh, something that does happen with these types of signals the theatre box lights up first before the signal itself clears that's just something they do and I managed to capture that on the camera here for, a, uh, for this instance and the letter D here, well that corresponds to the line numbered D, or lettered D in this case. Through Cardiff Central there are five lettered lines, A through to E of course, um, and this signal has a root set from it for line B, so there you go, signaling related there. Uh, in fact this was actually part of a time lapse, so if we proceed forward the next frame we can see the signal has cleared to a cautionary aspect and do you remember what I said earlier about these cautionary yellow aspects that means the red signal the next signal will be red you can see a red signal over here I'm not sure if that is the corresponding signal of course but like what we said earlier the next signal after this one will be red potentially unless the signals change after the train has passed this one. Um, you can see as such the time lapse. This was about a thousand photos worth which is quite interesting. Uh, and you can see this within my, if you look at my channel trailer you can see the outcome of this time lapse which I think worked quite well. Okay. Oh, yep, there we go. Did we notice the signal did turn green here for a moment? Hang on, when did it turn green? It must have turned green very early, Tom. Okay, then. Okay. That's quite interesting. So, what I said earlier was correct. So this signal relates to this signal here. So you can see in this photo here the yellow aspect relates to the next signal. Well you can see this yellow aspect down here as well and that is well another um, problematic thing with these signals. If this signal steps up from a red aspect to a yellow aspect then the uh, the signal prior to that, this one, will not immediately turn from yellow to green. But in this next photo, as you can see, it does. And then a couple of frames later, you can see the signal down this way turns green also. Let's see if I could find some more photos to demonstrate that. Uh, no, that's not where I wanted to go. Let's go this way then. Of course, because the pace... Uh, okay, we are currently going backwards. Uh, the picture is quali low quality because it's loading, which is fantastic. Okay, hopefully this will work. Here we are. So, <clears throat> excuse me. This train, Pacer train here, wants to go towards Treherbert, 
from Platform 7 via Ninian Park. So to do that, uh, the theatre box indication N is given for Ninian Park along with a single yellow aspect, Caution. And that is because the next signal down the road is this one here, which you can see is red. So this means, reinforces that, a yellow signal relates to, uh, it, well, gives the message that the next signal down the line is likely to be red. Next frame, we can see that the next signal down the road also has a N in the theatre box indicator relating to Ninian Park and a single yellow aspect and because that single yellow aspect is, is not red then the signal goes green um, and the signal is green over here as well. Now let's go and see if the SimSig has arrived and the answer is no. So that is a slight problem. Mr. BNSF train Mr. BNSF, me, me, yeah, I can't speak. Mr. BNSF train, uh, good evening, uh, or hello, good afternoon, uh, where you are, I believe it's afternoon for you. Um, so this was meant to be a stream about SimSig, but as you can see, it is currently broken and not responding. So I do believe, thank you for joining me, but I do believe that shortly I will be uh, ending the stream if I can't find anything else interesting to talk about which is signaling related on my computer here which I don't think I will be able to whoopsie uh, I don't think that has worked basically evening for you fantastic well good evening Hope you're doing well, and I hope your day has gone well for you as well. Um, you may be wondering what this is. This is a this is a time lapse shot I did at Cardiff Central, and it's, it saved every individual photo that I made of the uh, time lapse onto my camera. I say about approximately a thousand, or or I'd say about eight hundred, or possibly even down to seven hundred and fifty. Where were these taken? So we look at the properties here. This was taken uh, at the start of this year, 25th of January uh, 2020 at 40, 59. So one minute to one minute to three in the afternoon. Uh, and you wouldn't think it was one minute to three in the afternoon with the gloomy atmosphere, you know, all this drizzle and because because it's typical Welsh weather that's how it was on that day it's been actually quite gloomy and drizzly over the last couple of days even though it's the height of summertime we still get a quite a bit of rain here um, but I suppose you have to be used to that if we are living in Wales it does make for a nice atmospheric photo though So all of these part, all of these are part of a time lapse shot. Okay, nice one. So I'll just um, go through the signalling procedure again. So as you can see here, the signal here is red. We've got a Herbert train waiting. We can't see it on the right-hand side over here, which wants to go via. Ninian Park so hence we've got the N indication here for Ninian Park and the signal clears to a cautionary aspect because the signal over here is still at danger you can see it's red it has a, a N in the theatre box indicator but the signal is still red when that signal over here clears to a cautionary aspect or another sort of proceed aspect um, this signal up here will turn green. Now, if the case was... Uh, if, if four aspect signalling were to be used in this area, 
and the signal you can't see it behind this train now uh, but this signal here if this signal steps up from a danger aspect to a cautionary aspect and four aspect signaling was in use we'll have a single yellow here and we'll have a double yellow here okay so the double yellow here tells the driver the next signal is going to be yellow and the yellow signal tells the driver that the following signal is going to be red so yeah that's how signaling works basically in very very basic terms and I should be able to demonstrate that very quickly now as it is half past 11 and I do believe the SIG, SIMSIG has broken 39 minutes playing SIMSIG and it is has broken unfortunately so we'll get rid of this which is a great shame as actually I was enjoying that uh, hang on while Windows reports problem to Microsoft thank you very much let's head over to our Seagate expansion drive this is where we put all the signals and videos and photos and doodah on here and we can search I've put some wild cars and stuff into here so I have one particular video which will be quite interesting to see um, in fact this will be relevant here as well because we were just playing the SimSig simulation at Westbury so you can see we are currently on platform 2 I think yep platform 2 and this is facing towards oh there goes my tripod having a bit of a wobble there so the line diverges up to the left here towards Trowbridge and Bradford on Avon and goes straight on to go towards London and the Burks and Hans line I believe it's called uh, and and uh, you can see four aspect signaling is in use here and very shortly uh, the theatre box indication will display a T if I remember rightly there it is there we go so T here means to go towards Trowbridge and you can see the signal has stepped up from a red to a green aspect the train will now be able to proceed to Trowbridge but what I was going to refer to is here so this is fantastic because you can see three signals in a row and all using four aspect signaling so this one is green that means this one's green and this one in the far distance is double yellow or, or preliminary caution is it otherwise called now if we skip forward we can see a, a long blue sausage this is a locally uh, known name for a train that carries cars up from Southampton Eastern Docks to Halewood uh, near Oxford I believe but as you can see this train goes past and resets and sets this day the signal back to danger we shall now proceed and the train has passed the second signal on our screen here which is also reverted to danger now when the sig when the train clears a certain distance beyond that second signal called the overlap I believe then this signal will step up from a red to a yellow or from a danger to a caution aspect meaning the next train can proceed towards the back of this one stopping at this signal of course so yellow here means uh, danger here okay Now as this train proceeds along, continues, it will pass this third signal in the distance over here. And when that does happen, whoopsie, when that does happen, where it goes beyond the overlap for this signal here, then the signal here will change to 
yellow and this will see you can see the double yellow aspect here preliminary caution so preliminary caution here means the next signal is going to be a caution which it is and caution here means the next signal is at danger which it is now here comes another train we have a 450-566 and because this train was at preliminary caution this train this signal here is at caution that means it will need to slow down but the freight train head has just passed the clearing point of the next signal beyond this one here that means this signal has now returned to a stepped up to a cautionary aspect this one therefore to a double yellow uh, because remember the next signal around the corner from this one will still be at red because the train the freight train has not uh, passed the overlap for that signal over there um, so that means this train will have to slow down but as this train passes the overlap for this signal here the second one here the process repeats again so this signal over here echo 702 steps up from danger aspect to a cautionary aspect because the signal in the middle here the second here is still at danger regardless of what this signal is showing because there's a train on the track between this signal and this signal this signal here the second one is going to be showing a danger aspect and therefore echo 702 here is going to be showing a cautionary aspect so hopefully that clears things up But apart from that, I do think, because of our fantastic technical difficulties, that will be the end of the stream. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully that was informative on how to operate SimSig successfully. And a little insight on how UK signalling works. But I'll bid you farewell, bid you good night at 20 to midnight and thank you for watching see you in the next video